Usually we travel by ourselves, but this week, everything changes. We're Cody, Olivia, and Roan. In 2022, we sold our house and all of our belongings to pursue our lifelong dreams of travel. For the next few years, we are driving Jambo, our 1985 Toyota Land Cruiser Truby, south on the Pan American Highway to Argentina. Subscribe to join us weekly as we travel overland in our classic 4x4. Our time in this Airbnb is coming to a close very quickly. Uh, we've been here for about three days. We're meeting up with some friends here in Ensenada, and we're going to be traveling south through Baja, doing a little bit of 4x4, camping on the beach. Uh, so we're pretty excited to uh, meet up with these people and experience travel as a group, which is, for the most part, going to be something completely new to us. Wait, hold up a second. Did Cody say travel Baja in a group? Yup, you heard him correctly. Little did we know when we set out on this trip that three months into it, we'd be asked to drive the Baja Peninsula by a YouTuber with over a million subscribers. You might have heard of her before. Does the name Ava Zubek ring any notification bells? Well, on a fateful Sunday night in Ensenada, we met up with Ava, her lovable, goofy German Shepherd Vilk, Matilda and Nick of Next Meridian Expedition, and Marianne and Chris of Tread the Globe. Ava outlined a plan of action for our group pursuit of the full Baja experience as we drove the peninsula south for the week. The group agreed that we were in search of warm weather, white sand beaches, crystal clear water, and as much 4x4 driving as we could find. We would reconvene with everyone the following morning to start our adventure, but first... Cody and I had a lot of cleaning to do in Airbnb, and we had to repack the trippy for several weeks of travel. So one of the things that we are looking forward to over the next nine days is traveling with uh, vehicles that are the Troopies contemporary. Um, they might be a little bit newer, but in terms of power and size uh, and overall vehicle purpose, uh, I think we're all going to be pretty well matched. We got our first glimpse of Cody's beloved Defender 110s that we would be traveling with for the next week. Odyssey, Ava's Dark Blue 2006 TD5, and Albatross, Nick and Mathilde's White 2012 TD4. Was Jambo, our white Land Cruiser Troopy, just a little jealous with how enamored Cody was with these Land Rovers? Probably. But the thing about Toyota Land Cruisers is that, despite everything you throw at them, they just keep chugging along, which is what Jambo did regardless of Cody's newfound Overland besties. So this is going to be our convoy, most of our convoy for the next few days. We have Ava Zubek in the blue Defender, and then we have Next Meridian Expedition in the white 110. Who's, who's leading the convoy? I think Ava. Ava? Ava, you lead? Yeah. You lead? You leading? To start with? What, what? You lead to start with? Yeah. All right. We will take the rear and uh, follow everyone else. Ready to go? Let's yep, do it. Ready to go. Ready. Ooh, it's good. With all final preparations made and walkie talkie radios turned on, we were off convoying east to the Gulf of California in search of our first beach camp. This was Cody and I's first experience traveling in a group while on the Pan American, and to say we were excited would be an absolute understatement. Hesitation was our initial response when we were invited to deviate from our typical solo travel style, but the buzz of energy we felt during the first few hours of travel with this group was addictive. Rolling into camp that evening, we couldn't wipe the huge grins off of our faces, hardly believing this was our life now, even if it was only temporary. We have made it to camp. It took a little while to get here. It's slow driving in Baja with just the state of the roads they're not really that bad they're paved but they're just bumpy and windy and lots of things that make you drive a little slower and we're with three relatively older vehicles that just take it a little easier so uh we're just north of san felipe on the beach uh catching up with everyone this evening hopefully chris and marianne of tread the globe will be joining us later we'll see if their van will make it out here or not but no it should be fun um yeah i think we're just gonna 
wrap up, eat dinner, get prepared for the big drive tomorrow because we're trying to make our way as far south as we can as quickly as possible. So I think it's gonna be a long drive to try to get to Baja California Sur, the next state down uh, sooner than later. This beach that we're on this morning is our first properly nice beach since we've entered Baja and uh, the sand is really fine. It's nice and white, but the water is a little less than desirable. It's kind of just like a big mucky area. And I'm just out walking around right now. And uh, it's funny because last night he ate three big conchas that we had stored on one of our seats while we were visiting with everyone. And uh, I don't think his stomach is super happy about it. Maybe next time you won't eat all the conchas. I really wanted those for breakfast this morning. <laughs> With our first day behind us, it felt like we were all becoming fast friends, bonding over shared adversity. Even Ronan Vilk, despite Vilk's endless puppy energy. And of course, any good overlander knows you must share stickers with your new friends. I am putting our sticker on the next Meridian's Defender. On the Wall of Fame, is that what you called it? Yeah. yeah. She's Fame? making history. Making on history. <laughs> no, she's fine. Okay. There you go. Good day, Jumbo. Good, Good day, Jumbo. Good day, Jumbo. That's a beautiful sticker. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you. Can I make you? Yeah. Try to make it as straight as possible. There we go. Nice. Beautiful. Too. All right, now yeah, it's Ava's turn. Oh, Ava's turn. Wherever you want. Oh, Make sure it's straight. Yeah, perfectly <laughs> straight. Is it? Is it? Yeah. It looks... uh, no, is it? <laughs> <laughs> So traveling with the group and having them on the radio and talking back and forth and just like spending time together has been really fun, like more fun than I expected. Like I feel like Cody and I and Rhone too are creatures of habit and routine and you know I thought this maybe would throw that off a little bit and I'd get a little stressed but I actually am finding it really fun to spend time with everyone and get to know them and just I don't know interact with the group and like travel in a different way so yeah just really enjoying it. Part of traveling with others is sharing the overall mental load where to stop for food, fuel, where to camp, when to push forward, and when to turn around. We used our midday stop to work together on several of these, and of course, to resupply our beer stash. What are you feeling, Tecate? Hey, always Tecate. Soul. There's no Pacific goat, so probably Tecate. I'm like, just imagining his tail hitting the, the spices uh. and <laughs> knocking them all down. That would be a very veal move. That would be very, very. We're getting close to camp for the evening and we had to stop at the market to try and get some directions, figure out where exactly we're going and uh, pick up some beer at the Rancho Grande, Rancho Grande market behind us, uh, which is a necessity for uh, beach camping. So uh, the choice is... This one, right? Yeah. That's the one. So either we... I don't know what that looks like. It doesn't now it's 41 though. Yeah, we're just... It's probably off road, okay, so it'd be slow. You can have lunch peacefully at this beach and yeah. drive later. You know? Yeah, that might be a good decision. Eat lunch real quick and then head, yeah, head out there. Um, I think I'm going to have to reduce the pressure because it's going to be like this the whole way. So we've made it to our turn off and now it's off road from here to our beach camp tonight. Google Maps is saying about an hour to drive about 37 kilometers. So everyone's just airing down their tires right now because it's a little bit of a rough rocky track to get a little bit comfortable of a ride and we're going to head on out to camp and uh, yeah, maybe swim and do some uh, beach hangs. So we'll catch up with you guys soon. Hopes were high that the hour-long off-road track would lead us to a quiet, beautiful paradise of a beach. <laughs> if only we knew what we were about to get ourselves into. I 
As we rounded the last corner, we quickly realized this was not our long-dreamed-of paradise beach. Sketchy vibes were high as we stumbled upon what appeared to be a less-than-legal mining operation. Though the workers we met said we could camp just across the way from their work on the beach, Cody and I felt quite unsettled by their required beer tax and their suggested track along the tide line that looked impassable even for a well-equipped 4x4. Nick and Mathilde bravely went first in Albatross, but quickly found themselves stuck in deep sand precariously within reach of the rising tide. It's situations like this when you're glad you've carried hundreds of pounds of recovery gear for thousands of miles. Jambo to the rescue! Cody and Nick teamed up to problem solve the recovery using our dynamic recovery line and shackles, and everyone on the beach witnessed a Toyota rescuing a Land Rover. But that's not the first time that's happened, is it? Well, that is not what we expected to find when we went to camp this evening. Yeah, definitely wasn't expecting to stumble on what appeared to be like a pebble rock mine or something like that. Or like a pea gravel mine. Uh, but it was nice. We got to use our recovery gear for an actual recovery for the first time the entire time we've been traveling. Uh, naturally, Nick Nick is the one that said this, uh, but uh, it was the Toyota Land Cruiser rescuing the Defender. So... Um, we're not going to start uh, keeping score or anything, but... Uh, the recovery went well, I think. It was only like three yeah. pulls maybe on our active recovery rope from Max Tracks, and the Defender was popped right out. Um, and yeah, we did not want to camp near there. It seems like a sketchy place and kind of yeah. just, uh, you know, pick your eye over lander sites carefully. That one had one entry mm -hmm. and no pictures. So yeah, maybe not the best choice for us, but it was an adventure to say the least. We decided to check it out just because of the scarcity of um, beach access in the area that we're currently at. Um, but we've got a cool spot here in some old aged granite. Uh, so um, I think we're going to cook some dinner real quick and hang out with everyone and enjoy the nice colors in this little valley. Yeah. Good night. Do you ever wake up in the morning like a single minute before your alarm gets off? I've been doing that a lot lately in the Troopy. Hey, I was gonna throw that for you. <laughs> uh, he's such a funny dog. We stayed up pretty late last night hanging out with everyone. I am pretty sure it was almost midnight when we hopped in the Troopy to finally go to bed. Which is the latest that we've stayed up probably since the East Coast um, at Olivia's stepsister's wedding. Normally we go to bed at like 8 if we're by ourselves. but. Last night was incredibly fun, like the type of night that we as just two travelers by ourselves most of the time almost never get. So super fun hanging out with everyone and sharing a few drinks and uh, just seeing where the conversation goes. Um, over the last couple of days, Olivia and I have been talking a lot about uh, just the opportunity to do this trip and for me, getting to travel with these two Defender 110s and film it and make videos over the course of our trip together um, is really kind of the realization of a dream that I've had for almost 10 years now. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? I'm sitting here. <laughs> Still 
riding high on the feeling that we were finally living our dream life, we departed camp and headed for an alternative route back to the highway that had been proposed by Nick. quickly proved to be quite different than the relatively mellow road we drove in on the day before. Ava's top-heavy Odyssey struggled to crest a technical off-camber climb, and despite everyone's best attempt to get Odyssey up the hill, Ava felt more comfortable breaking off from the group and backtracking alone. That was quite the tricky little technical section of track there. The ruts in that little spot got super deep very quickly and it was all off camber and cross axle terrain um props to ava for giving that a shot i think if nick had not been leading the group olivia and i would probably have at the very least hesitated to do it and possibly have turned around it's so visceral the tipping of your vehicle and ultimately your house uh so yeah props to her for giving it a shot the rest of us decided to soldier on and see what the 4x4 track had to offer, and wow, we are really glad that we did. It turned out that we had accidentally taken a well-known route called Kalamaway Canyon. Honestly, it was the funnest 4x4 track we've ever driven in Baja. Driving up the bumpy riverbed, winding through the canyon walls, it just doesn't get much better. What do you guys feel about the track? I loved it. Love Honestly, it. first time going through sand, cactuses, uh, off-road, twisting the car. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you for coming with us. Yes, we loved it. Matthias, how did you feel? It looked like the Lost Valley. Like, we were alone. It felt... Yeah, it was quite the adventure. Not planned, so even better. Yes, exactly. Oh, well, we thought it was awesome. We loved it. We're glad that you guys decided to go forward so we could do it too. Uh... We haven't driven very many 4x4 tracks in Baja last year or this year, uh, but the one today was a prime 4x4 track. It was the right amount of technicality and fun, flowy sections. Uh, the technical spots I think we probably wouldn't have done if we weren't with a group. Um, and I think if it had been just Olivia and I on our own, we probably would have foregone that. Not uh, because we didn't think the Troopy could do it, but it would have been uh, a little sketchy to risk breaking something that far out and not having the ability to self-recover. With a group, we would have the ability to get a ride out to get spare parts and whatnot. So uh, that's definitely a nice change of pace uh, as opposed to us traveling by ourselves all the time. We reunited with Ava in a small town off the highway just south of where the Canyon 4x4 route dumped us out and continued our convoy to a beach camp on the Pacific side of the peninsula. Though this was only our third day together, it was interesting how quickly we all felt like old friends, quickly bonding through our shared choice to take a life path far outside the norm. As Ava likes to say, the world belongs to the brave. Adventure, adversity, new friendships, all of it is out there if you're brave enough to go find it. We have two more Baja group videos coming up. Subscribe so you don't miss them.